Hi, welcome to Mint. We're at the Luxury Conference and we're here talking to Sanjay Kapoor, who is the president of Genesis Luxury. Now, my first question for you is, how do you define the typical luxury customer? Who's the person who's actually buying these products? So the average luxury consumer in India, in my opinion, is a um, global citizen. Um, in fact, the consumer who's buying luxury, whether in India or mm. Malaysia or Hong Kong or Kuala Lumpur, is pretty similar. Uh, it's a consumer that wants to look good, wants to feel good, is excited about the finer things in life, and it's got a pretty much a global outlook towards okay. life. Okay, so you know you could get more specific in different countries, what kind of age groups and demographics and stuff like that. I don't know if you've got the answers yet for that. Our sure. market is still very new; it's five years sure. old only, sure. right? So I really don't know if you've got enough answers to define or uh, to explain exactly what a luxury consumer is. But I would say it's a global citizen. Right. But when a person comes in to buy a luxury product, is he, is he or she t t uh, usually buying for his or her own self or is it more for gifting? W what do you a see? large percentage is still for self-consumption right now. Uh, gifting is a large part of our Indian culture, but luxury has not evolved to be that gift yet. Okay, okay. Not yet. Okay, but you see that changing also? I think it's changing fairly okay. rapidly. Okay. At the same time, um, speaking of Indian culture, around festivals and around events like marriages, there tends to be a lot of conspicuous consumption. Is that something which uh, is true even for products outside of the traditional uh, ethnic products? Well, true. Marriages are the most recession-proof part of our Indian okay. culture. Uh, yes, there's large conspicuous consumption of w wealth, let's say, in marriages. Sure. A lot of it will go into more traditional forms like jewelry, etc., right. etc. Luxury is earning its place in, its, in the sun right now in okay. marriages, okay. but it's still a very small segment of it. Okay. So, the marriage part is still a small segment of the luxury or overall? The marriage part is just a small segment of luxury, of, of luxury. not of overall. Overall, it's a large part of the market. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Um, and as you mentioned, it's recession-proof. Now, the overall economy has not really... I didn't say luxury is recession-proof. I said marriages are recession-proof. That's what I was going to ask you. I mean, okay. the luxury industry as a whole, how has that fared? So for us, we felt the market has been very good. We've gone okay. through fairly substantial growth, but also my belief it's because it's starting on a very small base. Okay. How do you define growth when the base is so small? Right. I think that's, that question is going to be more relatively important five years down the road. Now, earlier in the morning, uh, there was a lot of talk about FDA about uh, tariffs uh, on luxury products. So with increased FDA, how will that affect your business? So, you know, um, A, I didn't hear the sessions in the morning. Sure. Okay. Um, B, any market that opens up to me is good. Okay. Right? Sure, with FDA open, some brands would want to come in themselves and, you know, they will, uh, they will always be that threat. Right. However, to me, the most important thing is when a market opens up, there's a feel-good factor around the country. More okay. brands want to come in. More infrastructure is developed. Right. Better supply chains come across, which okay. is just good for the economy. Okay. And it's good okay. for the market. Okay. So for me, this is a hugely positive step in the right direction by opening up FDI. Okay. Whether in multi-brand retail or single-brand retail. Okay. Now, you are working with both international brands as well as Indian brands. Is the scenario different for these two sides of the industry? In what sense? in terms of both opportunity, growth, and also... Um, they have their own opportunity. They have their own growth patterns. Uh, right. Our main Indian brand, Satyapal, is an ethnic brand. Right. Um, we're present in 18 cities in India. Right. Uh, you know, it's, it's got its own joys when you create your own brand. Right. Uh, some of our luxury brands are as exciting, okay. but uh, the market opportunity, I wouldn't, it'd be wrong for me to say it's smaller because you've got a whole width of brands. Right. Um, just getting the right infrastructure is more challenging. So both have their pros and cons. Uh, to me, what's important is it's got one uh, similarity, that's the Indian consumer. Okay. To me, one of the things we focus very, very strongly on is how do we understand the Indian consumer? Right. What does it take to understand the Indian consumer? Right. That has been a large part of our learning, which consistently is changing on a daily basis. Right. Now... Online is growing a lot in India these days, and uh, I, I remember reading in another interview which you had done that Satyapal has been quite successful online. So, um, could you expand on that a little bit more? So, in Satyapal, we've been successful online for our NRI market. Okay. Not so much for the Indian market. Okay. In the Indian market, online, I know, has been growing substantially in the last few years with okay. players like Mintra and Jabong creating some in interesting waves. Uh, in luxury, 
at least currently online is an insignificant part of the business. Okay. It's it's a new business, so people want to touch the product, want to learn the product, they need to be educated about the product, right. which is slightly more challenging on online. In in Satipal, we have a very strong NRI clientele which have serviced reasonably well through the digital medium. One thing which you've spoken of uh, also was the difference between buying as personal consumption, buying as an investment. So I was hoping you could explain a little bit more about that. I mean, well, you know, the analogy that I made was, you know, I was talking to a jeweler friend of mine, right, who who happened to give me the, uh, you know, g gave me an anecdote on how a consumer would come into a store right. carrying a handbag worth a couple of lakhs right. and would start negotiating on a on a diamond and gold set which cost maybe 10 lakhs. Right. And the lady consumer would really ask how much gold has gone into it, what kind of making is, how many carats of diamonds, and start negotiating and bargaining. Right. And that same customer may not negotiate or bargain in a luxury store because right. she would get intimidated doing it. Right. So I think the analogy is still today jewelry is considered an investment vis-a-vis right. -vis a luxury handbag or shoe is considered a consumption. Okay. So people would want to get value for money more in investment rather than in consumption. That was just the definition that I made. Right. But do you think that that is also actually hampering the adoption of luxury? Yes and no. I mean, there's no resale value to a handbag, right. mostly. I'm sure there's some if you really, if you really, really search for right. it. Uh, but really, it's a lifestyle product. Right. In a lifestyle product, it's different from, a, from an investment product. Right. I mean, today, real estate in India is haywire and insane compared to a purchasing power parity, but it's considered an investment. Right. Right. right? So I think that's, that's, the, that's just the way our system is. The uh, market in India is definitely lagging behind China. What do you think are the main steps that need to be taken to address this? Multiple things. I think the largest challenge is the availability of the right infrastructure in India. Okay. Um, high street will always be a challenge in India because of our weather situation. Okay. Uh, we don't have the most conducive weather to have great high street shopping right. like Bond Street in London or right. Road to Arrive in LA. Right. So infrastructure to me is a large challenge. Right. Uh, B, just the regulations around import and just the difficulty of doing business in India right. restricts a lot of companies from coming into India. Right. And lastly, I'll say our fairly substantial tariff uh, duties, right. which range between 20 and 30 percent, which are pretty much on the higher end. Now, especially when talking about things like uh, red tape and tariff duties, these are things which obviously the government itself needs to be involved in. So do you think that the government needs to be more involved with the luxury market? You know, luxury is still such a small segment, I don't think it's in the government's radar. <laughs> okay. okay? Uh, I think in the larger perspective, the government has many more important things to sure. do. You notice I said tariffs are the last. Right. I didn't put it first. Right. To me, infrastructure is a large deficiency. And infrastructure is also something to do with the government. A, right. uh, real estate land cost is so high right. that it may not make sense for a developer to go and create a luxury mall right. because our productivity is not enough. Right. Okay. Now, if you look at the model, you know, look at Singapore, Hong Kong, they've turned into tourist destinations. Right. And the government actually worked to make it a tourist destination. Absolutely. I don't know if that's important enough in India, right. in the scheme of things of where we are. I'm not the government. I'm, you know, so I don't know if I can be passing judgment on that. Sure. So that's pretty much it for me. Thank you so okay. much for your time, Sanjay. Thank you. Nice Take care. You.